Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Psych Files. And this is a video podcast in which we are going to, once and for all, memorize the major parts of the brain. Let's start with the part that you can see outside here, and this course is the cerebral cortex. All right, all this convoluted stuff on the outside of the brain. Now, you take a look at the word cerebral cortex. Now, what I'm going to do is look for words inside of these words. And there are a number of words inside cerebral cortex, but I'm going to go with the ending, tex. Okay, now, when I see the word tex, why, of course, I think of Texas, right? Tex. So, now, all I have to do, really, is just put a little, there you go, a little Texas hat on my uh, cerebral cortex. And there you go. That will remind you that the cortex is uh, the part just under the hat, right? Part on the outside of the brain. And now you got to connect it with what the cerebral cortex does. And the cortex is involved with a variety of things, but mostly with very complex thinking. So when you think of complex thinking, just think of E equals MC squared. So, when you have to remember what the cerebral cortex is, just identify with the word tex. Think about the hat here on the outside of the brain, or put it on your head, whatever. There you go. And there you go. Complex thinking. Complex cortex. A bit of a rhyme there. Okay. The corpus callosum. Now, perhaps you remember that the corpus callosum is the, uh, the part that connects the two halves of the brain. Now, when I think about the word corpus callosum, um, I, I could see a couple of words in there. I can see core, uh, almost the word plus and callosum, plus and sum. Now, that's kind of good because what the corpus callosum does is sort of add together the two parts of the brain. Now, oh. You got a right and a left hemisphere, right? And uh, unfortunately, in this brain, it, this is hollow. But that's because uh, that must be because this, because this is a no-brainer. <laughs> anyway, core plus callosum. So it is the part of the brain that goes right between the two halves and uh, adds them together. And that's your mnemonic. All right. Just kind of think of the plus and the sum part. Although there is another possibility, which is that the, la uh, the second word, callosum, sounds like call someone. Because the thing you got to remember is that what the corpus callosum does, it's this, this uh, fibers that connects these two halves and allows the two halves of the brain to communicate. So it's sort of like if you had a phone here and uh, the corpus callosum is, uh, of course, not a wireless phone, the part that connects these two halves of the brain here. There you go. So the message just goes back and forth, back and forth. That's what the corpus callosum does. So it's either call someone or cor plus callosum. Well, best I can do. Okay, number three would be the thalamus. All right, let's get rid of this. Now, what do you see in the word thalamus? I see two words. Hal and Amos. Hal and Amos. Well, here they are here. Okay, now this is my Hal and Amos. Okay, here's the uh, picture of the brain and the body here. So they're here in the brain. Hal and Amos. And here's all these signals coming from the body, represented by these cars here. Now, signals are coming up from the body, and then Hal and Amos tell them where to go to be processed in the brain. So the first one comes up here and Hal says, hey, all right, head over to the uh, occipital lobe. And then this one goes, wait a minute, okay, head over to the parietal lobe. So it's telling these things, these sensations, where to go. And they're going around, and of course they're coming in from the body. So there's all this information coming in to the brain. And then Hal and Amos are telling that information. They're acting as traffic cops, and they're telling that those uh, pieces of information, where to go in the brain to be processed. Now, that's the thalamus. What about the hypothalamus? Now, do you want to use Hal and Amos again? Uh, I don't think so. 
I don't like to mix up two, uh, two mnemonics. So, you look at the word hypothalamus, and what do you see? Well, of course, the word hypo, all right? And this is a hypo, okay? It's the toy hypo. And then there's Hallinamus. Now, I, I don't know, you, um, I couldn't really work too much with uh, Hallinamus. So I, I looked at the word, and one way to play with mnemonics with words is to sort of toy around with the accent and the syllables. And if you look at hy hypothalamus, you might see hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. Now, of course, you know what llamas are. And if you're having trouble forgetting, remembering, here you go. Here's two llamas. Now, how am I going to associate a hypo with two llamas? Well, it's a bizarre enough, uh, you know, kind of imagery here, this hypo with the llamas. But what does the hypothalamus do? Okay. Now, the hypothalamus does a lot of things. Uh, among them, uh, I heard it referred to as the thermometer of the body, that it regulates body temperature, that it lets you know about hunger and thirst and the major drives, like the sex drive. So, let's see, wait, wait hmm. uh, how about this? I'm gonna put my two llamas on this uh, plate here, and you'll see why in a second. What would I have to do? Well, what if I filled my hypo, and here's a rather large hypo. What if I, what if these llamas were all, they've just been out on a long run, and they're hot, and they're thirsty, and then what I'd have to do is go around with this hypo, and I'd have to hypo them like this here. I'm hypoing the llamas to cool them down. This is water. I'm cooling them down because they're all hot, and now they're getting cooled down, and their hypothalamus is reacting to that. And here, they're a little bit thirsty, so I'm going to give them a little bit of water there, a little bit of water. There you go. So now they're not thirsty anymore. Maybe they're not as, as much hungry and their bodies are cooled down. There you go. So the hypothalamus is the part of the brain that cools you down, that regulates body temperature, and uh, that regulates thirst and hunger and other drives as well, but we'll, we'll stick to those two. All right? Hypo the llamas. There you go, hypothalamus. Okay. Now, how about something similar? The hippocampus. Now, of course, some things are easy. Whoop, gotta get this all. Uh, you have a word like hippocampus. Well, obviously, you have to go with the hippo, okay? Now, this is a hippo, not to be confused with a rhinoceros. This is a hippo, and a uh, hippo campus. Now you could imagine a hippo stomping around on campus or on your camp, right? But remember, we have to put hippocampus or a hippo with what the hippocampus does, and the hippocampus primarily is involved in memory. Now, what else do you see with the word hippocampus? Well, it could be hippocampus. Okay, now here is a compass. All right, it's gonna flip it open here. Now what's good about that and why that works is the a compass is used when you're lost and you can't remember where home is. So if you had a lost hippo, well, this hippo would take out his compass here and he'd say, well, where the hell the heck do I get back to the swamp, right? That's what he would do. So I'm going to imagine for hippo campus that I have a hippo, right, with a compass. That's because he's lost. He needs to remember how to get home. Okay, hippo compass.